Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to come together in here and learn of the word of truth as given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua, in him lies the only hope for salvation. It is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if we do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that we do not believe. In this state, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that we do give, whether it be a gift of tongues or a gift of prophecy or a fancy new house, fancy new car, fancy new job or any other material or supernatural experience, it can and it will be used against us in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let's open up to, I don't know, let's open up to John chapter 6 verse 44. John chapter 6 verse 42. Usually I do a parable, but I can't think of one right now. It's John chapter 6, verse 43. Matter of fact, let's do Matthew chapter 13. We'll find a parable. We'll just take one randomly. Matthew chapter 13. Give me verse, I don't know. Give me verse 32. Maybe 22. Give me verse 22. It's Matthew chapter 13, verse 22. Like this. Let's see what we land on. Boom. He also that receives seed among thorns, he that hears the word. In the uh, 32 there. Which indeed is the least of all seeds, but when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs. and becomes a tree. Give me 30. That both grow together until he harvests. Uh... Thirty-one? No, nah, I won't both go together before you harvest. Where, where does that start at? Twenty-seven. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. So give me uh, this is Matthew chapter thirteen, verse twenty-four. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a man which sows good seed in his field. Right. So kingdom of heaven is just like a man who sows good seed into his field. Right, he got a field, he sold good seed in him. So this is the man, I own the field, I got good seed. That's the only thing that me personally, I'm throwing inside of my field. But what happens next? But while men slept, his enemy came and, the, and sold tares among the wheat and went his way. So the kids, because nowadays they call them haters, right? He had a hater that came in and he started sowing, what are you sowing now? Tares. Tares into his field. So the seed of another another uh, unfruitful plant. You know what I'm saying? So you just start putting that in this. So I'm throwing this seed. I'm trying to get some wheat. You know what I'm saying? So I'm throwing all my, my wheat kernels out there. You know what I'm saying? Everything lined up. You know what I'm saying? Ground cultivated. Everything looked good. So I went ahead went to sleep after a good hard day, long day of work. You know what I'm saying? Went to sleep. You know what I'm saying? Then somebody else come out there and they just start, hey, maybe lie. We got some them. Mess up all my wheat. You know what I'm saying? All my wheat. You know what I'm saying? Let's see what happened next. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth... When they say blade, they ain't talking about, they ain't talking about a knife or nothing. They say when the blade of the, of the, uh, of the wheat. So basically when the wheat grow, the, the, the leaf, you know what I'm saying? The, whatever it's called, I don't know. But the, you know, the blade, the leaf. Blade of grass. The blade of grass. But it ain't grass. <laughs> but like a blade of grass. Keep going. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. Right? So when the wheat start coming over, you know what I'm saying, bringing forth this fruit, all of a sudden... The tears start growing up just like that also. So here's the problem. You know what I'm saying? If you, if you go Google wheat and tear and all that, you'll see that as they grow, they look the same. Right? So what the hater was trying to do, he was trying to sow uh, some tear inside of the wheat because they look similar. Right? They look alike as they grow. It's not until they fully grow that you can tell the difference between them. So it kind of messes up a person's feel where you got to sort through, figure out what's real, what's not real. When you're watering it, when you're trying to get bad stuff out of the way, you're scared to pull up and pluck up everything because some of it may be wheat. Some of it is worthless. You know what I'm saying? Some of it is just weeds. 
You know what I'm saying? Just like you got weeds in your front yard and all that. Some of it's just weeds. Some of it's wheat. But in this case, the weeds and the wheat look exactly alike. So you got to wait until it's fully grown. And anybody who knows anything about weeds, when weeds are fully grown, they get to choking out all the other vegetation. Right? So that's going to get in the way of some of the wheat. So let's see what happens. So the servants of the household householder came and said unto him, Sir, did you not know, did you not sow good seed in your field? Right, so they asked him, I was like, didn't, didn't you sow some good seed in your field? But what's this mess out here, right? From where then has it tears? Mm-hmm. He said unto them, an enemy has done this. He said, the enemy did this thing. The servant said unto him, will, will you then that we go and gather them up? Mm-hmm. But he said, no. Lest while you gather up the tares, you root up also the wheat with them. See, and that's what happens. With even with uh even with weeds in your front yard. I don't know if you ever worked in the front yard or did anything like that. My pops used to have me, you know what I'm saying, he had a little garden on the side of his house. And I he used to have me out there, you know what I'm saying? I have to go, I have to get like this uh this like little rake looking thing, and I have to slam it into the ground around the, the weeds, you know what I'm saying? Slam that thing and then break it up. And as you break it up, you had to be careful that it didn't pull out like the roses that he had out there or any of the other plants that he had out there because it grows all around that stuff. So you got to kind of like hit around it and you just kind of break it up and try to pull it up at the root. So he's saying, let's not, right, let's not mess, mess with these tears. Did you mess around and pull up the tears and then they'll pull up the wheat also and you'll ruin your wheat, right? That's what he say though. Let both grow together into the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Right? He said, wait until everything fully grown. Right? Once everything fully grown, I'll pull up a tear. If I accidentally pull up a wheat, so what? I got to pull it up anyway. I'm going to pull up the tear first. Then I'm going to take the tear, I'm going to bundle it up, and I'm going to throw it away. Right? I'm going to burn that thing. Right? It's good fire. You know, that's good for fire. I got to stay warm anyway. I can you know, light a fire with that. He said, but the wheat, then we're going to take that and we're going we gonna to enjoy the wheat. All right, so we look at it and we're talking about Bible. What are we here talking about farming for? Right? He's going to tell you. Watch this. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, mm -hmm. which indeed is the least of all seeds. But when it and is when he say least of all seeds, he's saying the smallest of all seeds. Right? He said, that thing's a, that's a very, very small seed. He said, but what happened? But when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air can come and lodge in the branches. Y'all get a chance. Y'all go look up. Y'all go look up what a mustard seed turn into. Or look up the, how big that tree is or the mustard seed. It's a huge tree. Right? It turns into a huge tree. Right? He said, well, that's what the kingdom of heaven is like. Right? It started off with something that seems so small, so insignificant. All of a sudden, when that thing done, it's the biggest thing in the world. Right? Keep going. Another parable he spake unto them, The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which a man, woman took and hid in three measures of meal, till the whole was leavened. All these things spake Yahushua unto the, unto the multitudes in parables, and without a parable spake he not unto them, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have, it, have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Mm-hmm. Keep going. Then Yahushua sent the multitude away and went into the house. And his he sent the multitude where? Away. Why did he send the multitude away? So he spoke to them only in parables. Book say, now nah, he didn't speak to them in any way except parables. That's crazy. I don't know why he would speak to the multitude only in parables and then he sent them away. Let's see what happened after he sent, not before he sent them away. Let's see what he waited to do until all the multitude, which are by definition followers of Christ, right? Because they were following him. So let's see what happened to the, the mere followers of Christ after he sent them away. And his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. Look at that. Multitude got sent away. The followers of Christ got sent away. Only thing left was disciples. And guess what disciples did? They asked questions. That's why I tell you. That's why every time that's why I tell y'all, if y'all looking on YouTube, y'all find this video on YouTube, y'all in the room, y'all out somewhere else, no matter what, if you call yourself learning Bible for somebody, ask a question. That's what disciples do. All right? We ask questions. All right? Keep going. He answered and said unto them, He that sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The so look at this. This is explaining the parable that we started off with. Remember? Man came out to his farm. He had good seed. Right? Just throwing it out there. 
So now you're trying to explain. This is what it means. Now the multitude go, you say, all right, they gone. You know what I'm saying? Let me explain to y'all. Let me break it down for y'all. The one that sold the good seed, who is he? Son of man. That's Yahushua. Yahushua out there putting out the good seed, right? What's next? Excuse me. The field is the world. He said the field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. Uh oh. So now you got the children of the wicked one. Hold what you got right there. What verse is that? 38. 38. Hold verse 38. Go to uh, John chapter 3. First John chapter 3. He said the good seed are what? Uh, children of the kingdom. And then the, and the, what, the bad seed are what? Children of the wicked one. It's 1 John chapter 3. Give me verse 6. Whosoever abides in him sins not. Whosoever sins has not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that does righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that commits sin is of the devil, for the devil sins from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. Mm -hmm. it. In this the children of God are manifest in the children of the devil. He said, in this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil? Yep. Right? Who's Another way of saying children of God is like saying a what? Son seed of God, right? Matter of fact, he said he cannot see sin because it's what? Seed is him. Right? So you look at it, it's trying to tell you, like, man, some of these the seed of uh seed of uh of God. Some of these are gonna be the, the seed of the wicked one. Right? He trying to break down the parable for you. He just told you how you identify which seed you are. Right? You obey that word. That shows that you cannot, right? You cannot sin because the seed is in you. In the other way, you ain't going to be able to help with sin. You know what these people say. It's impossible to stop sinning. Right? Let's go on back. This is uh, Matthew chapter 13, verse 38. Matthew chapter 13, verse 38. These people can say a lot of stuff, but they can't say we ain't teaching that book. us into hypocrites or we can you know what I'm saying everything everything we do now we can get by on technicalities you know what I'm saying everything everything this world got going on you can get by on a technicality you know what I'm saying something ain't really got to be right all you got to do you know what I'm saying like if you go to court right you can I mean you can kill somebody in cold blood but if the officer didn't read you your rights you'll get off of that thing kill you I mean kill them in cold blood on camera but you know what your lawyer is good enough to prove that that officer didn't read you your rights. Technically, you can get off of that thing. Because the whole case is based off of someone improperly handling the case. Those are technicalities. So now, that type of stuff is ingrained in people's mind. So they try to get in on a technicality with God. Right? They don't like something that we preach. They don't like something that's being taught. So they say, well, technically. Right? Technically. Technically this and technically that. Right? God don't work with no technical. That thing either right or it's wrong. Period. Ain't no technicality. Uh, you can't you can't contact me talking about, you know what I'm saying, talking about talking about, you know, this is how people feel and all that. It's not about feelings. It's about what does the word say. It ain't about intentions. It's about what does the word say. I don't care what you meant to do, I don't care how you felt when you were doing it. At the end of the day, what did the word say? That's what faith is. Don't let people confuse you. Faith is believing what the word says exactly how it says it. If you get to putting a whole bunch of other stuff, well, I could take it this way, then you don't believe it. Right? You don't believe it. If you look at the word and you got to say, see, you know what? Uh, water don't really mean water. Water mean people. Right? So Jesus didn't walk on water. He walked over the people. He's presiding over the people. That thing make a whole lot of sense when you don't believe it. When you don't believe that a man can walk on water, that make a whole lot of sense. That's the only way it does make sense. Because I'm looking at it's impossible for a man to walk on water under any circumstance. I don't care who you are. Jesus or Smeezes. It's impossible for you to walk on water. Right? 
So when you tell me you want more water, makes no sense. I gotta find some deeper meaning to make this make sense. Ah, I got it. Water means people. So now Jesus is walking all over people. That makes a whole lot more sense, don't it? You don't believe the word, right? Or at the end of the day, no technicalities. It's about believing the book. You don't, don't come to me, don't send no text message talking about, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, I just think this means some. I think the 12 tribes represent the 12 zodiac signs. You go ahead and keep all that stuff. Go ahead and keep all that. I don't need none of that. When you talk to me, I'm telling you what the books say. I'm going to teach you the history. I'm going to teach you what we came through. I'm going to teach you I'm gonna teach you the New Testament as it's written. I'm going to teach you all that. We're going to go through it. That's what we do. If you want to hear if you call yourself extra spiritual, only thing I'm going to send you is one thing. What Paul said. If any man think he's spiritual, let him know that what we teach is the commandment of the Most High God. Keep going. It's Matthew, Matthew chapter 13, verse 38. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. Mm -hmm. The enemy that sows them is the devil. Mm -hmm. The harvest is the end of the world. So the harvest is the end of the world. So you remember he said, wait until they all grown and then get them up. So now it makes sense. Right? That's why we look at this thing and be like, oh, God, why? Right? All this, why do you let all this wickedness go by? This answers that parable. He tells you, Man, there's some good stuff out here in our planet. There's also a whole lot of wickedness out there. There's some signs of the wicked ones out there also. Right? And I could pull them up, but if I pull them up, it might pull some of y'all up too. Right? So I'm going to let them all grow. And when everything's done growing, I'm going to pull it all up at one time. And I'm going to separate them. You see what uh, Moses had to tell the most high? Like, you know what I'm saying? Don't destroy them because everybody's going to think you couldn't bring them out. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> we definitely going to get there too. Definitely gonna get there too, but that's what we see, right? We can see that answers that question: Why God? Why God? Is why? Keep going. No, I got a tablet. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. All right, you talking about the tares? The tares. Remember, that's the that's the seed of the wicked one. Right? He said they're going to be burned in the darn fire. Right? The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. Mm -hmm. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity. And shall cast them into a furnace of fire, there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Mm -hmm. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father, who has ears to hear. Who has ears to hear? Let them hear. Right? Let them hear. And you see the wicked ones get taken. Right? That's important for us to understand, important for us to know. Right? And we read these parables. It's not that the most high God running his darn mouth. He's trying to show us something. The reason why a lot of people don't get it because they still position themselves to just be Christians. And by, by Christian, what I mean is exactly what, what they started out meaning, a follower of Christ. Right? That's what the multitudes, excuse me, that's what the multitudes were. They followed them around. 5,000 people at a time. 4,000 people at a time. Probably more than that on some days. A lot less than that, I'm sure, on some days. Yeah, the book said there was too much going on to even write it in the book. Yeah. These people following them around because they're looking at it. And I'm not going to discount them like they didn't really want to believe or they didn't really want to, you know what I'm saying? They, they was followers. But it's still something that separated the followers from the disciples. And it wasn't just 12 disciples. It was a lot more disciples. On another occasion, he named out 70 of them. And that was not including the 12. And we believe it to be more than that. You know what I'm saying? But you look at it, either way, you have disciples separated from the actual followers. What made that separation? Right? Only the fact that they stuck around and they asked questions. Only the fact that they disciplined themselves to follow the man's teaching. That's what it comes down for us. We can't just be mere followers. We can't just stop and just say, hey, boy, you better back up. Back up. Alright? You can't be we can't just 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 rest on the fact that you're okay, well we've always been called Christian. No, man, we gotta challenge some of the stuff that's always been. What's always been in this book? That's all I wanna know. I don't know what we I wanna know what we always been doing when I got something that's always been in the book. What's older? My Christian church or this book? That thing crazy. 
you know this stuff is wrong. Y'all know this stuff is wrong. When y'all go in these churches, y'all know it's wrong. Y'all don't feel right in these churches. And if you do feel right, I feel sorry for you. But y'all don't feel right. Y'all know y'all don't. That's why you're on YouTube now. If you feel right in your church, why well, I got to go to YouTube and look for some word? You know you don't feel right. You know it's wrong. Why are you going to come to my Facebook page? If you know, if you're, you know your stuff is right, why are you in my inbox asking me questions? You know it's wrong. So why don't, you, why don't you just accept it and then step with it? Stop trying to play the fence. Got Revelation. What is that? Revelations, uh, what is it? Give me Revelation, what is it, three? Maybe it's two. Give me Revelation chapter two. Give me verse nine. I know it ain't right either. Verse nine, I know that ain't right. It's Revelation chapter two, verse nine. I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not. what I want. Scan it for me and look for uh, warm and, uh, uh, I mean, hot and cold. Might be three. Right? We can't play no fence. We got to choose a side. You know it's wrong. Once you know something is wrong, then you, you know what I'm saying? Just step away from it. Most high God can respect that. When you know something wrong, he can respect the fact you step away and just try to learn it on your own. Put all your heart toward learn it on your own. Learn it to the most high God and then wait and be patient and test everything. Right? Obey everything you do know. Even if you darn know it wrong, the most I gotta obey, the most I gotta reveal it to you as long as you obey it with your heart. Alright, that stuff is important. You can't just keep on sitting here and playing. It's getting way too late in the day to sit here and play around and play patty cake with each other about the word and try to just make everybody feel good for the sake of feeling good. You make people feel good at work, you make people feel good at you know what I'm saying? It it it, it playtime. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to truth and when it comes to word, when somebody's looking for God, you ain't got no time to be feeling good. You ought to feel bad. You've been wrong about hold on life. What do I feel good for? What happened? Revelation three fifteen. This is Revelation chapter three, verse fifteen. I know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot. Mm-hmm. I would thou were hot. You on the I fence. Would thou were cold or you ain't on the left side of the fence or the right side of the fence. You ain't cold nor hot. He's like, I wish that you were what? I wish I would thou were cold or hot. I wish you were cold or hot. I said, I see, I know you were. You ain't not cold or hot. Like, I wish you was either cold or hot. What happened now? So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Since you in the middle, I'm spitting your butt out. He said, if you were cold or hot, at least I know what to do with you. He said, but because you in the middle, though, I'm spitting that butt out. And y'all sit here and try to play the fence. Try to act like everybody right. Even these Christians that have complete, all these Christians serve a different religion, have a different denomination. And they all want to act like, well, at least we all Christians. Stop playing the fence. Stop it. You, you know these people wrong. You know you wrong, too. Just come out of that stuff, all y'all. These Muslims do the same thing. You got the Sunni and the Shiite. And you got the uh, Sunni, Shiite, and uh, something else. There's like a third one that's big. All y'all know that stuff is wrong. Y'all know that stuff don't make no sense. Getting on TV talking about it's a peaceful religion. Over half the population of these people talking about killing and maiming people. Y'all want to act like and pretend, oh, Donald Trump got us wrong. Donald Trump ain't got y'all wrong. He got a lot of stuff wrong. He ain't got y'all wrong. Well, they all right. And the ones that's peaceful, I ain't saying they are not peaceful. The ones that are peaceful, you know your religion ain't peaceful. You might be peaceful, but you know that ain't what the text say. You can read it and you know it ain't peaceful. They try to point to our book. Well, God God told y'all to kill and this, that, and the other too. And God wasn't peaceful. He ain't about to hear me. Why don't God come out here peaceful? <laughs> now, see, the Lord going around. No, he just, he commanded the children of Israel to go out and kill all these Canaanites. What I'm saying is say he peaceful. No, God wasn't peaceful. What the man? What the book say? God of war. It don't say God of war. What is that? I uh, came not to bring peace on earth. Give me uh, oh we got. Give me Exodus chapter fifteen. Give me Exodus chapter fifteen, verse one. 
talking about peaceful. I'm saying rely on God for it. I'm going to show you but peace out of his grace. He said there's prophesying peace when there is no peace. Just tell people the truth. If they don't like it, then they don't like it. I'm fine. Look, I'm going to tell you the truth about God. I'm fine if you be like, mm -mm, I can never serve a God like that. That doesn't make sense to me. I know. But I get it. I understand. I know. He said you wouldn't be able to. Right? The revelation. I mean, it's uh, Exodus chapter 15, verse 1. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord and spake. Watch the song. This is a song they are singing. Look at it. I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously. Mm -hmm. The horse and his rider has he thrown into the sea. Mm -hmm. The Lord is my strength and song and he has become my salvation. Uh -huh. He is my God and I will prepare him a, a habitation. My father's God and I will exalt him. Uh -huh. The Lord is a man of war. He's a what? Man of war. I got that. Yah is his name. Right? I got that. Yah is his name, and he's a man of war. He gonna get that, but what I'm saying, walk around. No, God is a God of peace. You better stop that line. Not our God. You light your darn butt up. You better watch out. I've been trying to tell y'all, y'all better line up. No, quick, he'll send somebody on y'all butt. You better line up. Don't lie on it. You a Muslim? Just stand on that thing. Yeah. Our God is a man of war. I'll blow that darn building up right now. Let's go put it butt in jail. I'm sniffing on your butt. So you say it too. But go ahead and tell these people what you believe. It's all right. And if you don't agree with it, I, I understand. Some of these Muslims just don't agree with it. If you don't agree with it, leave the God religion. Don't act like it ain't what it is. Same thing, you a Christian, you read this book, and you like, you got to turn away from sin. I think it's impossible to turn away from sin, but clearly the book, I don't believe in that book then. Then leave the religion. Go join Scientology or do something else. But why pretend like you believe in something that you really don't believe in? You don't believe in man who the water? Leave the religion. Why are you pretending? It's not that difficult. Don't be scared to stand up. Stand up for what you believe in. Don't let these people scare you. Don't let no Christian make you feel like you got to be a Christian. You ain't got to be no Christian. Be what you want to be. Be anything. You want to be gay. You want to be a, whatever you want to be. You be what you want to be. You just take your butt to hell if you ain't believe in this book exactly how it's written. But it don't do no good to pretend like you, you believe it and still go to hell because you still gay. You still don't believe a man walked on water. You still fornicating. You still darn lying. What's the difference? That's the weed in the tear. That's the weed. That's a, that's a whole lot of people pretending. They don't look like wheat, right? They don't look like weed. These people some tear. I'm going to tear their butt down as long as the most high God put them in front of me. Where we leave off last week? We was in Exodus. We left off after Exodus chapter 22. 20. Were we holding anything? It was 21. It was 20. We finished 21 though. Yeah, we did. Yeah, okay. No, we wasn't holding nothing. It's Exodus. We wasn't holding nothing just now? So let's go to Exodus chapter 20. Let's go to Exodus chapter 21 verse. Where verse should we leave off? 36. I think that's the last verse. If it is, just read the last verse and then we'll go to 22. It's Exodus, <coughs> excuse me, it's Exodus chapter 21 verse 36. <coughs> or if it be known that the ox has used to push in time past and his owner has not kept him in, he shall surely pay ox for ox, and the dead shall be his own. Right? So remember, we ran through some of these laws, and we noticed a few things. We noticed that some of the laws seem to, these, and remember, these are particular type of laws. What type of laws were these? Judgments. These were judgments, right? These were judgments that told us how to deal with lawbreakers. Right? If somebody break the law, this is what happened. Right? If you kill somebody, you will be killed. You know what I'm saying? You fighting with your friend and you accidentally hit a pregnant woman, however that baby come out, if the baby come out in this mischief, it's eye for eye, darn two for darn two. Right? If nothing happened to the baby, then, you know what I'm saying, let the judges decide. Right? You curse your dad, put him to death. So they tell you this is the crime, this is the punishment. That's a judgment. Right? If a person breaks this crime, this is the punishment that you must give them. Ain't no wiggle room. That's the punishment. This is what happens. Right? Those are called judgments. Commandments is like what we read before. Right? 
Last week and the week before, we started off with the Ten Commandments or the Ten Words, right? And then, if you look at that, he just tells you, thou shalt not. He don't tell you, if thou do, then thou going to get that butt. You know what I'm saying? He just tells you, honor your mother and the father. That's a commandment. Nothing else to it. This is what I'm telling you to do. I'm not telling you what will happen if you don't do it. Just this is what I'm telling you to do. It don't mean that nothing's happening if you don't do it now, of course. It's just saying that this, this is just a commandment. It's not a judgment. It's not going to give you the other end of it. This next part, he started to give us the judgments. So if we started off at Exodus chapter 21, verse 1, he said, these are the judgments. Right? Now we in Exodus chapter 22, verse 1. If a man steal an ox or a sheep and kill it or sell it, he shall restore five oxen for an ox and four sheep for a sheep. Pay attention to what he said there. If a man steal an ox or a sheep and do what? And kill it or sell it. If he stole it and then he kills it or sells it, how many fold? He shall restore five oxen for an ox and four sheep for a sheep. You got to give five oxen for that one ox or four sheep for that one sheep. Right? That's a judge. He's telling you if somebody steal it and then they lose what they stole, you got to give back five times or four times depending on what it is. Right? Watch this. Keep going. If a thief be found breaking up and be smitten that he die, there shall no blood be shed for him. When he's talking about breaking up, he's saying if somebody get caught breaking into your house. Being eaten. Right? He, he breaking into your house. And he get killed while he doing it. Right? He said no blood going to be shed for that man. In other words, when, when the Bible says bloodshed, it's talking about guilt. Right? So it means that if I kill somebody breaking into my house at night. Right? And we'll see where, where the at night part comes from in a little bit. But at night, in the middle of doing it, I kill him doing it. I'm not guilty, right? The law we already learned last week that if you kill somebody, what happens to you? You get killed. So my blood would be shed if I kill somebody. So what he's saying is, this man died, no blood is going to be shed for me because he got caught breaking into my house. Watch this. If the sun be risen upon him, there shall be blood shed for him. Right? So he's saying, if the sun is up now, it's going to be blood shed for me. Now, if the sun is up, and I kill this person breaking into my house. Well, that's it. Now I got to die, right? I fall on the same rules as I die. Even though he was stealing, even though he got caught breaking into my house, the sun was up, right? It wasn't night. And I caught him in that, I'm going to get killed for it, right? That's the judgment for it. God is fair. Why well, watch this. For he should make full restitution. If he have nothing, then he shall be sold for his theft. So pay attention. He said, if the man, so notice, if you had an ox or a sheep, you stole it, right? And then you killed it or you stole it, you got to pay five or maybe four times, right? But if you get caught in the act and the sun is up, all you got to do is make full restitution. I still have it, I just have to give it back. That's full restitution. I just got to give whatever I took, I got to give it back. You know what I'm saying? If I spend it, get rid of it, then I got to put extra on that thing. But if I still got it, you know what I'm saying, they call it my hand, I just got to give it back. And then what up? If the theft be certainly found in his hand alive, whether it be ox or donkey or sheep, he shall restore double. All right? Now, if it get caught in my hand, it's an ox or a donkey or a sheep, I got to put two on it. Right? Not quite the five before because I still have it. Right? It caught in my hand. I got to put two on it. Right? Keep going. If a man shall cause a field or a vineyard to be eaten... And shall put in his beast, and shall feed it another man's field, feed in another man's field. Of the beast of his own field, and of the beast of his own vineyard, shall he make restitution. All right? So I got my, you know what I'm saying, I got my ox, we just going, you know what I'm saying, walking along the way. All of a sudden, my ox start chewing off the field. I'm talking to my friend, my ox start chewing off the field because he's hungry. And I'm just like, yeah, this, that, now I look around, yo, hold on, half your field gone because my ox ain't through it. But I got to make full restitution. Whatever that was. I just got, okay, you got some wheat, and I'm saying, I'll get you some wheat, I'll restore your wheat. You know what I'm saying? That way you ain't got to, you know what I'm saying? It don't hurt you none. Just make full restitution. Keep going. If fire break out and catching thorns so that the stacks of corn or the standing corn or the field be consumed therewith, he that killed the fire shall surely make restitution. All right? So if I light a fire and it burn up your field, got to make restitution. I got to make it right. Whatever you lost, I got to give it back to you. If a man shall deliver unto his neighbor money or stuff to keep, and it be stolen out of that man's house, if the thief be found, let him pay double. Mm -hmm. So now, the thief is going to have 
to pay the double, right? Assuming that he still has it. Same rules as before. Keep going. If the thief be not found, then the master of the house shall be brought unto the judges to see whether he hath put his hand unto his neighbor's goods. Right? But if the thief, they can't find the thief, then it falls on the master, and the judge is going to figure out, was you a part of this or not? Right? Did you set this thing up or not? All right, so then they got to try to decide whether the, the master of the house. Because basically what I'm saying is, I have, I have something. I, you know, I have some valuable stuff. Like, T, hold my credit card for me. You know what I'm saying? I got to run. I'll do it. So, T, hold my credit card. All of a sudden, T, like, man, I got robbed. Now, if we find the thief that robbed T, then it's all on the thief. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and pay back double. You know what I'm saying? Give me all the money you spent plus plus, plus some. Right? But if not, we don't find the thief. T, like, man, I got robbed. We can't find the thief. thief. Then the judge has got to look at T and got to be like, okay. You know what I'm saying? Ask some questions, and they use their judgment, and they wisdom to figure out how does the situation really work, who's guilty, who's not. All right? Let's see. If the thief be not found, then the master of the house shall be brought into the judges to see whether he have put his hand to his neighbor's goods. Mm -hmm. For all manner of trespass, whether it be for ox or donkey, for sheep, for raiment, or for any matter, any matter of lost thing, which another challenges to be his, the cause of both parties shall come before the judges, and whom the judges shall condemn, he shall pay double unto his neighbor. Mm -hmm. If a man deliver unto his neighbor a donkey or an ox or a sheep or any beast to keep, and it die, or be hurt or driven away, no man seeing it, then shall the oath of the Lord be between them both, that he has not put his hand unto his neighbor's goods, and the owner of it shall accept thereof, and he shall not make it good. All right, read that for me one more time. Pay attention to what this says. If a man deliver unto his neighbor a donkey or an ox or a sheep. So a man deliver unto his neighbor a donkey or an ox or a sheep. To keep and it die. Right, and he said, I'm giving it to you. Just hold it for me. And it ends up dying under your watch. Watch what he said has to happen. Or be hurt or driven away, no man seeing it. All right, nobody saw what happened. All right, keep going. Then shall an oath of the Lord be between them both, that he has not put his hand unto his neighbor's goods, and the owner of it shall accept thereof, and he shall not make it good. Right? So I give my donkey to T. I say, hold that for me. I go away. Nobody saw what happened, but somehow my donkey ended up hurt. Or it's dead. Or let's say it's dead. My donkey ended up dead. I come back, T like, man, I really I have no idea how that happened. Right? I really had nothing to do with that. I had no idea. I'm sorry. It's that nothing. Book say, T got to be, he just got to take an oath before the judges. He take an oath like, I didn't do it. All right? This is my oath before the judges. And me, as the owner, I got to accept that and I just roll with it. Right? What happened next? And if it be stolen from him, he shall make restitution unto the owner thereof. Now, if somebody steal the, 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 the donkey from me, right? I was the T loaned me a donkey, then somebody stole it from me. Right? Then who is it on? It's on me. Right? Because now I had responsibility over the donkey until I let somebody steal it. So at that point, then I make restitution. Right? Let's see. If it be torn in pieces, then let him bring it for witness, and he shall not make good that which was torn. Right? But if it was torn in pieces, like an animal got to it or something like that, then I don't have to make good on that. Right? That's just an oath. Alright, keep going. And if a man borrow aught of his neighbor and it be hurt or die, the owner thereof being not with it, he shall surely make it good. Right? He said, but if I borrow it, right? If I say T, it's not just, so it's one situation if I'm like, hey, I gotta run, go over here, watch my animal for you, for me. Right? That's one thing. If that animal gets lost, gets hurt, something like that, then T just take an oath, it's all good. You know what I'm saying? If somebody's stealing from T, that's different now. T gotta, he, he gotta own up to that and he gotta make it good. Right? But as long as you just get hurt, torn into pieces, die, anything like that, then, you know what I'm saying, that's a different story. Right? Now, if it's different, T say, I'm not just giving it to T. T said, can I borrow your ox? Can I borrow your donkey? Right? And then anything happens to that donkey on his watch while he's borrowing it? What's the book say? Uh, and it be hurt or die, and the owner thereof being not with it, he shall surely make it good. If I wasn't with him, and T 
he got to make that thing good. In other words, he got to do full restitution. He got to give me back my donkey, give me a replace my donkey, and all that. Right? Why is all that interesting? But if the owner thereof be with it, he shall not make it good. If it be with a higher thing, if it be a higher thing, it came for his hire. Right? He said. So in other words, basically, if I'm with him, right? You have to borrow my donkey, but I'm standing there right there with it. He said, you don't have to make it good because I was with it. Right? That's something I sold out to you. I, I was overseeing the whole thing, and that thing, that's it. That was hired. Right? He hired my donkey, and I oversaw the whole thing. That's that's on me. Right? I don't, he don't have to make it good. Why is all that interesting? What about Jacob? Right? Go to Genesis. It's Genesis chapter 31. I think verse 39. Verse 38. It's Genesis chapter 31, verse 38. Who playing? This 20 years have I been with thee. Thy you. Now, this is Jacob talking. Right? This is Jacob talking to Laban. We read this a couple weeks ago, but watch this. This twenty years have I been with thee, thy ewes and thy she goats have not cast their young, and the rams of thy flock have I not eaten. That which was torn of beasts I brought not unto thee. Right, he said, That which was torn of beasts, what happened? I brought not unto thee. I bear the loss of it. Of Who bears the loss of it? I bear the loss of it. In other words, that means he made full restitution. Right? What else? Of my hand did you require it, whether stolen by day or stolen by night. He said, Laban made him make restitution of that. Right? It's stolen by day, it's stolen by night. If it's stolen, it's right. He said, the one that was torn, ah, you didn't have to make restitution. Oh, only Laban made him make restitution for all of it. Well, not made him. He said he made restitution for all of it. Right? Let's see. Keep going. Thus I was in the day... Drought consumed me in the frost by night, and my sleep departed from my eyes. Thus have I been twenty years in your house. I served thee fourteen years for thy two daughters, and six years for thy cattle. All right, so you look at these things. Jacob was like, anything happened, I'm setting restitution. I'm making restitution. All right? So most I God had to come through in these judgments, and he had to line that scenario up. Right? You'll see that he does that a lot with things that happened previously. Let's line it up with Cain and Abel. He said, man, you kill blood, you know what I'm saying? Well, no, nah, it's blood for blood now. Right? He laid that down in, in Genesis 9. Right? When Noah got off the boat. Right? But we look at this, blood for blood now. You know what I'm saying? You kill somebody? No, nah, you're probably getting killed too. So he look at that. He's like, okay, let's, let's make sense of this situation. I saw how Laban did my boy. You know what I'm saying? Let's make sense of this. Right? He said, listen, if it's torn, you just give up. You know what I'm saying? And then get injured, you know what I'm saying, die, you just give a hope. Now, if it's stolen, then lay them right. You got to make restitution. All right? If he borrow it, you know what I'm saying, you oversee it, that thing is on you. Now, if you wasn't around, that thing is on him. All right? So all these different things happen. In Jacob's situation, he wasn't borrowing nothing. All right? He was doing it for him. In that situation, anything torn, that was supposed to be on Laban. Alright? Anything died, that was supposed to be on Laban. Anything stolen, that's on Jacob. Alright? That's what these laws do. It just sets in order the wild, wild west. Alright? It puts everything in order. It makes everything fair. Alright? Everybody knows what they're getting into. Alright? Let's go back. It's Exodus, uh, oh no. Exodus 22, verse what? 15. It's Exodus 22, verse 15. All right, all of this stuff is it's, it's set in order to kind of, good, not all of it, but a lot of this to govern things that we read throughout Genesis. It's like certain things that we saw, it's like, oh, no, that's not going to work. All right, and the deeper we get into the law, you'll see more and more that it's set in order, a lot of the stuff that we read in Genesis. But if the owner thereof be with it, he shall not make it good. If it be with an higher thing, it came for his hire. Mm -hmm. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed and lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. Betrothed means engaged, right? Mm -hmm. So he's saying if a man entice a woman that's not betrothed, 
And she, you know, she's single, in other words, right? He enticed a single woman, you know what I'm saying, and lay with her. What's going to happen? He shall surely endow her to be his wife. Right? You got to ask that woman to be your wife. Right? I mean, but what if Pop say no? If her fatherly, if her father utterly re refused to give her unto him, he shall pay money according to the dowry of virgins. All right? What, what does that make remind us of? What situation is that dealing with? Dinah. Dinah, right? Let's read about Dinah. This is uh, Genesis uh, 38. 34. Genesis 34, verse 1. Read about Dinah, right? Remember, Jacob had how many sons? Twelve. Twelve sons, right? And the Bible tells us about one of his daughters. Her name was Dinah. Twelve sons, and he had one daughter that we know of, and her name was Dinah. Dinah, the daughter of Leah, which she bare unto Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. And when Shechem, the son of Hamor, the Hivite. Right, so Shechem was a Gentile. Right, he was a Hivite. When Shechem saw what? The son of Hamor, the Hivite, prince of the country, saw her. He took her and lay with her and defiled her. Right, so he lay with her. Right, he took a woman. That was that was engaged. I mean, that wasn't engaged. She is a single woman, right? So the law says at this point that he has to ask her to be his wife. Let's see what happened. And his soul clave unto Dinah, the daughter of Jacob, and he loved the damsel and spake kindly unto the damsel. Mm -hmm. And Shechem spake unto his father Hamor, saying, "Get me this damsel to wife." All right. So he kept the law. This is what the law said. This is a situation that happened. We're going to see why this law was set up in place. Right? Shechem, according to what the law just told us, handled this exactly right. Watch what's happening now. And Jacob heard that he had defiled Dinah, his daughter. Now his sons were with his cattle in the field, and Jacob held his peace until they were come. Mm -hmm. And Hamor, the father of Shechem, went out unto Jacob to commune with him. And the sons of Jacob came out the, in the field when they heard it. And the men were grieved, and they were very wroth, because he had he had wrought, wrought folly in Israel and laying with Jacob's daughter. All right? All our people were mad. We see this Gentile come lay with one of our daughters. We is all mad, right? We is all mad about this, man. man you know, we don't mess with that stuff, man. You know what I'm saying? We had never let her marry you. You know what I'm saying? You, where did that start? We read all this stuff. Where did it start? Uh. Uh, Who to start with? Us having that mentality. We ain't messing with y'all kids. It was uh, was it in Egypt? Started with Abraham, right? Oh yeah. You see, he had to go to his fa father's house to get his. Uh, That's right. Abraham was like, nah, man. Isaac, no, you gotta go. Go ahead and go to my people out. You know what I'm saying? I'm messing with these people over here. And Isaac said, told the same thing to Esau and Jacob, right? And so Jacob, you can imagine, told the same thing to his daughter and his son. You know what I'm saying? We don't mess with these people over here. Now, Jacob's son, a lot of them mess with these people over there. There are a lot of them. You know what I'm saying? Judah was tripping. Judah did too, yep. You know what I'm saying? A lot of them mess with them. But you can, you can imagine that's what he told them. So that's our day attitude. They're like, nah, man, we ain't messing no darn Hivite. But then Dinah, she fell for one. You know what I'm saying? She went ahead and messed with the, the Hivite. You know what I'm saying? Shechem, he put that sweet talk on her. You know what I'm saying? Lay with her. And after that, he was like, nah, go ahead and make her my wife. Go ahead and talk to her pop. They was all right. Everybody was mad about it. Let's see what happened, though. But according to Shep, I mean, according to our law, Shechem did it right. You know what I'm saying? He, he lived with a single woman, and after that, he, 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 is, he had to marry. He has to, has to seek her marriage. And that's what he tried to do. He tried to, okay, let's get her father. Let's see if he would it. The next part of the law says the father utterly refri refuses, right? Let's see. Because he had wrought folly in Israel and lying with Jacob's daughter, which thing ought not to be done. And Hamor communed with them, saying, The soul of my son Shechem longs for your daughter. Mm -hmm. I pray you give her him to wife. Mm -hmm. And make ye marriages with us, and give your daughters unto us, and take our daughters unto you. Mm -hmm. 
and ye shall dwell with us, and the land shall be before you. Dwell and trade ye therein, and get you possessions therein. Mm -hmm. And Shechem said unto her father, and unto her brethren, Let me find grace in your eyes, and what ye, sh and what ye shall say unto me I will give. Mm -hmm. Ask me never so much dowry and gift, and I will give according as ye say unto me. But give me the damsel to wife. And the sons of Jacob answered Shechem and Hamor his father deceitfully, and said, because he has defiled Dinah, their sister. And they said unto them, We cannot do this thing to give our sister to one that is uncircumcised, for that were a reproach unto us. Right? He said, No, nah, no. We can't let you marry our sister unless you get circumcised. I think, for us, that thing be bad. We can't do that if you're not circumcised. That's crazy. Right? He said, That would be a reproach. That would be a sin for us. Right? If we let our daughter, our sister, marry you and you're not circumcised, that would be a sin for us. Right, what happened now? Then will we give our daughters unto you, and we will take your daughters to us. And right, you get circumcised, we can all just be a big old family up in And we will become one people. Mm -hmm. But if you will not hearken unto us to be circumcised, then will we take our daughter, and we will be gone. Uh-huh. And their words pleased Hamor and Shechem, Hamor's son. And the young men deferred not to do the thing, because he had... He had delight in Jacob's daughter, and he was more honorable than all the house of his father. So he is an honorable man. A lot of people try to tell you that he raped this girl. Book just told you he is an honorable man. He is more honorable than all of them. Right? You don't see no struggle. You think he raped her having a conversation about, about, about him being circumcised? That's crazy. Right? He just lived with her. Man, looking like, man, you know what I'm saying? We, we, don't, we don't intermingle like that with y'all. You know what I'm saying? We ain't like that. You know what I'm saying? So they're just upset that she even messing with somebody like that. They're like, okay. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, you know what I'm saying? Some of the, some of the brothers, we have, you know what I'm saying? We have a little sister that bring, you know what I'm saying? Bring a man to the house. You know what I'm saying? We be like, who are you? You know what I'm saying? Did she, did she do anything wrong? Did he do anything wrong to her that we know of? No, but we still, uh, excuse me. You know what I'm saying? Who's you? Right? It's that type of situation right now. I don't mess with especially she bring, you know what I'm saying? Something. Something weird, you know what I'm saying? That, you know what I'm saying? We ain't really used to our family don't get that. Like, imagine, you know what I'm saying? Little sister, you know what I'm saying? Light, black, you know what I'm saying? Little sister. Bring in some gothic, you know what I'm saying? White boy, pierced and all. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, no, we don't even, you know what I'm saying? We ain't tattoos all day. You know what I'm saying? We don't even, we ain't much. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm talking about? See, that's how we kind of looking at it. You know what I'm saying? Even though they like, we don't mess with these black folks. You know what I'm saying? They're like, you know, they're real not. Nah, he's black. We don't mess with these dudes. They crazy. The hip guys? Man, you can serve all lots of weird guys. We don't do that type of stuff. So they're looking like, you know what I'm saying? Listen, you get circumcised. You know what I'm saying? Maybe we can work this thing out. But you remember the book said they answered them deceitfully. They is lying to them. Watch what happened. And Hamor and Shechem, his son, came unto the gate of their city and communed with the men of their city, saying, These men are, these men are peaceable with us. Therefore... Let them dwell in the land and trade therein, for the land, behold, mm -hmm. is large enough for them. Let us take their daughters to us for wives, and let us give them our daughters. All right? So Shechem went back to his people. He like, listen, these men are peaceable with us. Right? He didn't know they answered them deceitfully. Right? So he thinking they all telling the truth. Listen, they peaceable. Listen, we can be a big family. We give them our daughters. They'll give us their daughters. Right? Everything could be nice. He's like, listen, all we got to do, keep going. Let us take their daughters to us for wives, and let us give them our daughters. Only herein will the men consent unto us for to dwell with us, to be one people. If every male among us be circumcised, as they are circumcised, shall not their cattle and their substance be every beast of theirs be ours? All right, he and said, we're going to share all their riches. All right, he said, the only thing we got to do, y'all, is get circumcised. Uh-oh. Only let us consent unto them, and they will dwell with us. And unto Hamar and unto Shechem his son hearkened all that went out of the gate of, the, of his city. And every male was circumcised all that went out of the gate of the city. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass on the third day when they were sore that two of the sons of Jacob, Simeon and Levi, Dinah's brethren, took each man his sword and came unto the city boldly and slew all the males. They waited until they were sore from being circumcised. They waited to the third day of their circumcision. When everybody was sore. Because everybody that was inside the gates of their city got circumcised. 
And after they all sore from the circumcision, and they, you know, getting pretty much injured, and they went in there and they slaughtered every one of them. All right? Watch this. Keep going. And they slew Hamor and Shechem his son with the edge of the sword and took Dinah out of Shechem's house and went out. The sons of Jacob came upon the slain and spoiled the city because they had defiled their sister. When they say spoiled the city, they took everything good out of the city. Right? They took everything good, all the riches that they had, everything that was valuable, they took it out of the city. And what two sons he said did it? Simeon and uh, Jay, or who's it? Simeon and Reuben? Levi. Levi, yes. Yeah. Simeon right? and Levi. Book say Simeon and Levi did it. Right? Levi keep that in mind. They had to redeem himself from now. Yeah, keep that in mind. Simeon and Levi. Those two were the ones. They went in and they deceitfully killed all these people when they are doing the circumcision. After they promised them, if you do this, we can be one big family. They lied to them. Right? These are these are sons of Israel. These are the people of God, right? They lied, made this lie, and well, that's the difference between our book and a lot of these other books. A lot of these other books, you're not gonna see, you're not gonna see it expose the dirt on the people it's about. Our book, you can tell, our book had nothing to do with the I mean, I ain't gonna say nothing. Our book you can see is not big enough our people. Oh, our book trashed us the whole the whole way through. You know what I'm saying? We the main characters of it. And it trashed us the whole way through. Talk about how we don't know big, we don't do nothing God say. You look at all these other books. You know what I'm saying? It either ain't gonna talk specifically about a certain group of people, or it ain't giving the bad side of it. Right? Because they ain't honest. Our book is more unique than anything that they got out here. I tell keep it real. I ain't trying to I ain't trying to make nobody look good. The only thing person I'm trying to look good is God. Right? They sinners. They lie. They went in there, did what they had to do, got out, and they lied. Right? Watch what happened next. You know why uh, Simeon land was like inside of uh was it whose land was inside of? Was it Judah? Judah, yeah, they scattered around Judah and uh, a few other places too. I forgot we had to read it again. It's in Judges, I think. Or Judges or Joshua. And they took their sheep and their oxen and their donkeys and that which was in the city and that which was in the field mm -hmm. and all their wealth and all their little ones and their wives took their captives and spoiled even all that was in the house. Mm -hmm. And Jacob said to Simeon and Levi, You have troubled, troubled me to make me to stink among the inhabitants of the land, among the Canaanites and the Perizzites, and I being few in number, they shall gather themselves together against me and slay me, and I shall be destroyed, I and my house. And they said, should he deal with our sister as with an harlot? Right? Should he deal with our sister as with an harlot? In other words, should he treat our sister like a harlot? Should he treat her like a hooker? Right? He just walk around just thinking he could sleep with our sister? That's crazy. He's supposed to come to us first. He deceitfully dealt with him. Jacob, he saw that happen. He is like, man, y'all made me stink around here. These people will mess around and come around us and kill us. We small in number. They're going to mess around and kill us. We in their land. All right? Most high God protected us, though. All right? He didn't let them come after us. All right? But that was something that they're going to have to deal with. Simeon and Levi, we're going to remember that because eventually we're going to come back to that and and it's going to explain how, how the reason why those two tribes are treated a little differently. All right? Let's go back. Where do we leave off? Exodus chapter 22. 17. It's Exodus chapter 22, verse 17. <laughs> If her father utterly, utterly refused to give her unto him, he shall pay money according to the dowry of virgins. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Whosoever lies with the beast shall surely be put to death. Mm -hmm. He that sacrifices unto any god except unto Yah only, he shall be utterly destroyed. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt neither vex a stranger nor oppress him, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. All right, so you see what he's trying to tell her. He said you can't vex a stranger or oppress him. You were a stranger in the land of Egypt. Right? When you read through this law and you have somebody actually teach you the law, you see it's not it's not as harsh as these people try to make it seem. These Christians try, oh, I'm so happy I wasn't living. You, yeah, I bet you are happy. You're a sinner. What about this law is burning something hard? This law governed the country. It set things in order for a country that had no order. Right? 
say is still right. We can still run a country off of this law. And then it'd be right. Keep going. You shall not afflict any widow or a fatherless child. Right? You a widow, you a fatherless child, don't oppress them. Don't afflict them. Don't make, that, don't make stuff harder for them than it is for everybody else. In other words, look out. Look out for them. Look after them. This law so burdens them, ain't it? I mean, it's the, the letter kill it. You don't even know what Paul's talking about when you get to running your darn mouth. Keep going. If thou afflict them in any wise, and they cry at all unto me, I will surely hear their cry. Mm -hmm. And my wrath shall wax, wax hot, and I will kill you with the sword, and your wives shall be widows, and your children fatherless. He said, you, you afflict the, 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 the fatherless and the widow, I'm going to afflict your children. Right? Because now they're going to be fatherless. Your wife's going to be a widow. Alright, keep going. If you lend money to any of my people that is poor by thee, Thou shalt not be to him as an usurer, mm -hmm. neither shalt thou lay upon him usury. Right? He said, don't loan to people with usury. Right? Keep going. Usury, in other words, interest. Right? I give you twenty dollars. No, no, I don't want to hear no, no. I, right, well, I'm gonna give you twenty, as long as you give me thirty next week. My father-in-law asked me for, uh, for some money. He's, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead. You know what I'm saying? Just let me hold. Uh, I think he's asked for like two hundred or something like that. You know, little, you know what I'm saying? Let me, let me hold two hundred dollars, and I give you three hundred at the end of the week. I told him now. You tell your dad he gonna give us two hundred at the end of the week. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's crazy. You ain't about to give me no extra darn money. That's my law. What we gonna do? We gonna sit here and take some extra money? That's crazy. I told him now. You know, you told me he'll give you exact exactly what we give you. That's what you gonna get back. And I told you. You know what I'm saying? I don't even think he's gonna give it back. You know what I'm saying? If he don't give it back, it wasn't gonna be no fuss out of me. It wasn't gonna be no. Uh, no, you can't have it. Last time you did. Nah, we don't play them games. You need it, we got it. That's it. If we got it, you got it. If we don't got it, we don't got it. But if you need it, we got it. Period. Alright? It's our boat. We have to operate off of these principles. Alright? We can't keep all this law. And not because we're not like these liars say we can't keep it just because it's impossible. We can't keep it. It's impossible because the temple ain't here. It's a lot of that law that required the temple. So in that sense, we can't keep it. But this stuff, we can keep. We can treat people right, man. There ain't, ain't nothing wrong with that. We can treat some people right. Ain't nothing stopping. We don't need no temple to treat people right. All right, that's bull. That's all this thing teaching us to do is to treat people correctly. Keep going. Don't let any people with usury. That's the wicked hypocrites do. If thou at all take thy neighbor's raiment to a pledge, thou shalt deliver it unto him by the, by that the sun goes down. Right? If I mean, if I say, "Hey, listen," you know what I'm saying? I'm a, uh, I'm a hold on to your, to your, to your, your jacket. You know what I'm saying? As long as you got my car. You know what I'm saying? Something like that. You know, you know, I got it as a pledge just to make sure that you come back. You know what I'm saying? Once, once you come back, or once you fulfill what you need to do, I can't be like, "Okay, I'm gonna hold it. I'll bring it on to you later." He said, "You bring that thing before the sun come down." The day that you agree to give it back. You give it. We got another law that we gonna read later. We got another. It's the same thing about paying somebody. You owe somebody something. You give it to them. The day that you 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 say you gonna pay them, you give it to them before the sun go down. He said because he poor. He said it's hard on that. Hey, you don't do that. Watch what he say next. For that is his covering only. It is his raiment for his skin. Mm -hmm. Wherein wherein shall he sleep? And it shall come to pass when he cries unto me that I will hear, for I am gracious. Uh huh. Thou shalt not revile the gods, nor curse the ruler of thy people. Mm hmm. Thou shalt not delay to offer the first of any ripe of thy ripe fruits, and of thy liquors, the firstborn of thy sons shalt thou give unto me. Mm hmm. Likewise shalt thou do with thine oxen, and with thy sheep. Seven days it shall be his dam. On the eighth day thou shalt give it me. Mm -hmm. And ye shall be holy men unto me. Neither shall ye eat any flesh that is torn of beast in the field. Ye shall cast it to the dogs. All right, you say anything that's torn of itself in the field, you cast that thing to the dog. That they don't, we don't eat that stuff. You know what that means when we walking out. Let's just, I mean, let's just say we hunting because you right now we can just go to the grocery store. You know what I'm saying? But let's just say we just walking out and we just hunting for food. And you got you a nice, I mean, a nice deer. You chasing that thing all around. You know what I'm saying? Let's say we got a bow and arrow or something. You know what I'm saying? I don't want no bow and arrow. You know what I'm saying? I want like a, they say, yeah, I got, no, I want a sword. I'm going to just chop him up. You know what I'm saying? I got my darn sword. I'm just going to, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to chop him up with the sword. You know what I'm saying? Just going to throw that 
thing at him or something. I don't know how you gonna do it. But you you chasing him. You know what I'm saying? It's like I lost him. I don't know what happened to him. Then you you hit a corner, look around a tree. That thing just dead right there on the floor. You see somebody else already got to him, like some tiger or something. Already got to him, wrapped him up, caught him. You know what I'm he bloody and ripped up, right? That thing looked good. I mean, he a chunky knife deer. Got some good meat on him too. He just got killed right there. You didn't even see it happen, but he just got killed. Books say that day we can't touch that. That ain't none of ours. That thing unclean for us, right? That's what it's saying. If that thing died. And, got, and it's torn, that thing is unclean for us. Right? We don't know what happened to it. We don't know how that thing died. We don't know what the circumstances is. We don't know how healthy it is to eat. When we kill something, that's when we can eat it. Right? That was the last verse? Yeah. What time you got? We're on 23. Huh? Was that what time? Yeah. 10.30. We'll, we'll, we'll wrap up right here, and then we'll, um, we'll pick up the next chapter. The next chapter is... Uh, uh, Exodus chapter uh, Exodus chapter 23 and then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and finish that one out and then we'll move out that'll finish up the law or not the law but it'll finish up uh, the commandments for this section and then we'll talk about how Moses because uh, right now you have to remember the context Ten Commandments the Most High God spoke himself alright he spoke out of the mountain himself alright and he said it everybody heard it then they got scared they was like no 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 why don't you let Moses talk to you, and then Moses can tell us what's going on. So Moses went up with God, and the Most High God spoke to Moses only. All the stuff that we're reading right now, this is God speaking this stuff to Moses. Moses has to memorize this stuff and write it down, right? So what we're going to read next week, we're going to read the rest of these commandments. There's one more chapter of these commandments. And then we're going to see how Moses wrote all this stuff down, and he delivered it to the people, and then he read all this stuff to the people. Right? Then the people got to hear. So right now, only Moses is hearing it. Then he's going to deliver it to the people. All right? Then after that, we're going to see how they react and all this stuff. And there's a whole lot more to it. Um, and then after we get through some more of the narrative, we're going to go back into more commandments. This is not it. All right? It's just the first part of the commandments. And more just keep getting added on. Because remember, things are happening every day. And as things happen, God is saying, this is how you deal with this situation. This is how you deal with this situation. This is what you do with this situation. So as things happen, more things are being added, more things are being added until the law becomes complete. And then that's when that's when Moses comes back in Deuteronomy and he kind of gives what they call the second giving of the law. But he kind of re-explains everything at the end of the 40-year period before we go into the land. All right? So we'll try to cover all of it or as much as we can. Any questions in the meantime? Well, let's pray out.